What is up, DG Army? Netherboy back with uh, also with John back with some more strategy this week, and my drive is now crashing every 10 or 15 minutes, so I'm gonna have to kind of make this quick. This is the Panther II, the Tier 8 German medium tank. Really pretty good tank. It's good. I want to say it's awesome, but it's got the problem that all high tier German tanks have, where uh, World of Tanks uh, put the tra the uh, transmission up here in the front, so it's pretty easy to pin the uh, the engine from the front, and that's really not historically accurate. But they wanted to nerf all German tanks and do that because German tanks were actually pretty good. So this is not a great tank. It wants to be awesome. It's it's pretty good. It's as good as the Panther. If you're a good player, you can do well in this tank. You just need to be cautious. If you play Russian tanks, you can just basically, or American tanks, you can be a lot more aggressive. This tank cannot be as aggressive because it does have some weaknesses. Uh, the weaknesses are the Traverse is pretty slow, a little bit better than a heavy tank, um, and the range of the German tanks historically are not, just don't happen in this game uh, with the spot range being like 455 for the max spot range. Uh, if it was a thousand, then German tanks would have a better chance at shining because this is a sniper tank. So pretty much you play this just like the Panther. It's just a little bit faster. It can relocate a little bit better, and uh, that's pretty much it. The, the penetration is about the same. If you look at these two different guns, the damage is a little higher, but the rate of fire is a little lower. So actually, I think the uh, L100 probably has more DPS. I'm not positive on that. It's about the same, really. I like the uh, long 88 just because it packs a little bit more punch in case I can't get another shot off. So the way you're going to play this tank is almost exactly like the Panther. Find a snipe spot and snipe people, and then use your mobility to relocate if you need to and get all over the map and help people out. Move up and support people. Um, you're going to get flanked. I've been circled in this tank by other mediums and stuff and light tanks um, because it does have such a slow traverse. If you get tracked, you can get circled no problem. Uh, you basically are heavy in this tank, so do not get, don't let them close on you. Use your gun to shoot out tracks and stuff like that. That's how you play this tank. We're going to have to quickly get through the rest of this stuff. So let's get through uh, some stats. 1,450 hit points. It's 10 higher than the American uh, Pershing, which, again, not a good bonus there, but it, uh, the Russian tanks are coming in at 1,300, so you got a little bit of a bonus over them, but it's really not that much. It's 5%. I don't think it's enough to balance it. Um, if they want to balance this thing, take out the front uh, transmission since it didn't even exist in the front. It was a mid transmission as far as I remember. Uh, correct me if that's wrong. But take the transmissions out of the front if you want to um, even this tank out with other tanks. I don't care if Russians die a lot on the Russian server with this thing. You shouldn't look at tank stats and how people die in this tank because they don't play it right. You should look at, um, all, take all the best players and see which tanks get you know, get the most kills. The best player should be determining how the tanks are played, not the average player. Because the average player probably doesn't know how to play this tank, so they, do, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but there's no way that this tank's dominating in any server. But anyway, let's keep going. 750 engine power, pushing up 50, 48 tons. It's about 15 to 1, a little bit more. So it does have pretty decent acceleration. Not as much more of a boost over the Panther as I had hoped, but the E50 and the E50M kind of push the mobility up a lot on this tank and make it actually pretty awesome. Again, transmission still being in the front has a big handicap. and is It's kind of like playing with a trick knee. And everybody knows it. They just kick you in the knee when they see you, and then you're kind of out of the match. So save your repair kit, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but save your repair kit for your for the engine being out. I or the ammo rack. That's the only two things I use my repair kit on this tank. I hit get my track kit, I don't repair it. I'm just doing engine, and I'm just doing ammo kit, and I'm probably going to show you a game where I get hit in the engine two times in the same game. So anyway, back to stats. 29 traverse and 28 church versus 57 total. Not very good. You're basically a heavy, a little bit better than heavy. Kind of like a Russian heavy. Russian heavies have this kind of mobility. Um, so, not good. Uh, whole armor... Uh, it's not, it's okay with 100 on the slope right here in the hole, but for tier 8s, they're going to pen you all day long. It's not that good. Patch 8 should improve it with the uh, change to normal, normalization. Um, sloped armor gets a little bit of a bonus, so that's kind of nice. If you angle it like this, it does get a lot better, so always make sure you're angling this tank, maybe like so. Don't angle it too much because people will shoot you right through that top of your track and right into your side armor. So remember, just a little bit of an angle like this, just to give your front armor a little bit of help there, front plate. Uh, 120 on the turret, not that great. Uh, it was good at lower tiers, but now it's getting a little lackluster. And the front of the turret is almost flat, so you can pin it right through the front there with like a 200-pin gun, and it'll go right through. 
This tank cannot take hits. It's going to get pinned. Um, the side and back armor, again, really horrible, kind of like an American tank, except they don't have the American uh, armor up on the, t on the front, which is weird for a sniper tank. You'd think that a sniper would have really good armor. But you know what? The Germans did... This was good armor back then when this thing came out. Uh, again, in this tank... In this game, when you're going up against tanks that came out at basically the, at the end of World War II or in Korea, uh, you're not going to stack up as well. That's kind of how German tanks are. Their tech was a little more advanced than everybody else's, but they get moved down, moved, I don't know, they get up-tiered up for some reason. Um, rate uh, 390 view range, pretty average. I really think it should be in the four-somethings. Because the American, or Americans, the Germans had the best optics in the war. This should be about 440 or something like that, um, especially as a sniper tank be, to accurately reflect the historical view ranges. They were better than any other tank on the field. These tanks, uh, 710 signal range, decent. That's all you're ever going to need. So we don't really need to talk about that. A lot of these high tier tanks have that kind of signal range. So. Getting into the modules, like I already talked about this radio, you should already have this radio for, look at that, for days. Every tank in the world has it. The PZ-3 has this radio. Um, it's surprising that the Germans must have had good, they had the best radios early on, and they were uh, up on the radio. Tr um, they were pretty much the most advanced nation in the world in tank technology when the, world came, when the war came out. And they led... The whole war in tank tech, it's the only thing they didn't lead on was sloped armor. The Russians came out with that first. Everything else, the Germans had the best. The problem really was it was not, it was a little bit over engineered and not mass manufacturable. And so they lost on attrition. Uh, but anyway, so great radio, even early on, you should have this unlocked like 10,000 years ago. Tracks, you get a three degree. Uh, degrees per second upgrade, which is really good. And you're going to need the tracks to get the turret and the gun. Well, let's just make sure that I'm not lying to you. Let's put the L100 on this thing and see what happens. Yeah, see, you're even going to need it for that. So, let's put the L70 on it. You should not even have this gun. Okay, so there, that gets you the turret. But if you have the L100, which you should have from the Panther, so you should be able to throw this thing right on. Let's see if you need that. Now, this is what I did, obviously. I threw it right on. And, huh. Cool. Nope. See, modules are too heavy. So you're gonna need, you're gonna need the tracks just to get that uh, L100 on there. So really, the tracks are gonna give you that uh, load limit increase, and that was historical. The uh, German German transmissions, uh, German transmissions were usually pretty bad, and the tracks suspensions were not that great. Um, they had nice um, road wheels and stuff. This interleafed wheel system uh, made them real smooth and stuff. They could shoot on the move a little bit, I think. But uh, the tr transmissions are usually not that great because they had so much weight. Uh, the engines are good. Oh, I didn't. Even, I haven't unlocked the top engine. I thought this thing was fully unlocked. Oh, I just don't have enough money to put it on. Interesting. So that that's gonna really help. And if you had this top engine, herb derp on my on my part there. I thought I had the full uh, capabilities of this thing. So the the videos you're gonna see does not have the top engine. I did unlock it, but I never bought it. 870 pushing 50 tons is a lot better than 750. It's gonna be a noticeable difference, and this thing will be moving around the battlefield very quickly. Then it's gonna be much much better than the Panther in that case. Sorry about that, herb derp there. Uh, great engines on this thing, and you should start out with this engine. See, I haven't even upgraded from the Panther, uh, but once you unlock this top engine, it's pretty mobile. The uh, turret upgrade, you should already have this turret from way, way back, I'm pretty sure. No, just the Panther 2? That's interesting. Okay. Even the lower turret? You're not even going to have any turrets? Well, that's pretty crappy. You're going to start out with the 100mm turret, which is worse than the Panther you just had. I don't get that, but whatever, that's the way the game works. Um, so the upgrade you get here is 20 mil on the turret, which is doesn't really help much. The traverse goes way down. It's going to be very noticeable, but you have to use it. You have to put that on to get the, the uh, long uh, 88, so just put it on. You get a little bit, of, um, a little bit of view range increase. Also some extra hit points and probably some reload speed uh, boost, but that is going to hurt. So you definitely don't want to get in people's face too much if they're going to start trying to um, trying to circle you with that kind of traverse uh, decrease. And I don't I don't even know. Anyway, let's not talk about it. I'm really mad at 
at this game for making German tanks suck so bad. They really should be awesome. I don't want them to be always the best, but I think all tank, I think all races should be equal. equal. I don't care about historically, because if you want to make it historical, all German tanks should be best, better than everybody else. This should be a tier 7. That's when it came out. It should be a tier 7. The Tiger 1 should be a tier 6. If you want to be historical, that's what it should be. I don't agree with that. I'm just saying, if you're going to make things... You can't... If you're going to say it's historical, everything needs to be historical. If you're going to go away from historical for gameplay, then all tanks of, of tiers need to be similar. They all need to be just as good as all the other tanks. Um, and I don't believe the German tanks are. But anyway. Uh, guns has a long, big range of guns here. And you will start out, I think, with this. You should have the, the L100, but you won't be able to do to use it until you unlock this turret. So you'll have to have, I'm pretty sure, this L70, which is pretty bad that they make you run with this stock gun. 138 pen on a tier 8, you're not going to be doing jack crap, okay? You need to get this turret ASAP because you're not going to be able to... Well, that's not true. You can put the L100 on. Herp Derp again. Let's see. Let's let's put this on incompatible gun. That's fine. Here's the L100. Sorry about that. So the L100 is a decent pen gun. You should throw it on right away. Great pen, great reload speed, great damage. Just like well, bad damage, but great reload speed. Just like in the Panther one. Um, so you're gonna have that at first until you get this uh, the tracks and the turret upgrade. After that, you can put this long 88 on. I kind of like this a little better. It doesn't feel a lot different, but it hits a little bit harder and people are a little more scared. When you hit them with the L the L100, they don't even barely notice that you're hitting them. At least with this tank and they're getting sniped, they might back up when you start hitting them with the long 88. So that's modules. Let's do some research. Here's the Panther 2 tech tree and it's actually a pretty simple tech tree even though it's got all this junk on it because you should have a lot of this stuff unlocked. You will have both of these engines, the Fug 12 from early on in the tree, the short 88 the L100, these are both from the Panther, and also this 10.5 from the Panther or below. Um, the L71, the long 88, you will have that if you have the Tiger or, or any other heavy line. Um, I had it, but you might not have it. So if you only have the Panther, you'll have tracks, top engine, the uh, long 88, and the, tr and the turret, and that's it. So what I suggest, especially since you're a sniper, you're going to go right for the turret, or I'm sorry, you're going to go right for the tracks, then the turret, then the gun. Because you have to have the you have to have the tracks to mount the turret. You have to have the turret to mount the gun, and then after that, the, the big engine, which is going to help you th with your mobility a lot, and then uh, everything else you don't have unlocked, and then go for the E50, and that's pretty much this tech tree. It's pretty simple. All right, we're back from research, and I'm just going to get into the equipment real quick. Standard equipment for all my my high tiers, vents, which helps your whole tank out with the plus five to all crew skills, loader or rammer, which is kind of obvious, get your gun to load faster, and vert sab. Probably not as um, great of a thing for these snipe tanks, but I think you're going to be using it in E50 and E50M a lot more because you're not going to be sniping as much, especially in the E50M. It seems like a lot more mobile tank. Uh, if you don't like this, though, you can go with Binox. That's going to get your view range out there a little better since you're trying to snipe more. Um, I think that would be the thing I would use if I wasn't didn't have the vert stab. Um, with rounds, I always go 4HE, 56 AP, or whatever else AP. There is a game I'm going to show you where I have 8 HE. That's just because I hadn't changed it out, but I always go 4 and the rest 8 AP. Full rocket consumables on tier 7 and above. Kind of obvious by now if you've seen any of my other videos. Definitely worthwhile. Remember, save your repair kit for the engine or the ammo rack. That's it. And your engine is going to get hit probably once a game. That's been my average is once a game. Um... On no other tank does the engine get as hit as much as all German tanks. Just want to throw that out there. Uh, uh, so your crew is going to look a lot like this. It should be at 100%. I don't... Oh, mine is at 100%. Duh. And your um, secondary skills should look a lot like this. Probably by the time I get the um, the E50, my, my I will have my first 100% here and probably working on my second. So the first one, I have all repair except I should change this commander to mentor and I'm gonna do that right now I have barely enough money and I don't know what happened to my money Oh, I bought the Yag Panther when I was on sale so I'm gonna use the 20% to drop this and let's watch what it drops to he's at 89 now he is at well, let's see 89 let's go with mentor this is gonna help the rest of my crew by 10% and he's at 87 so I didn't lose that much a tiny bit that's all I lost 
Uh, so now the rest of my crew is going to train 10% faster. The only time I wouldn't get it is usually if I have three, if I have two crew, I don't get mentor. Three crew, I still get it. I still think it's worthwhile. Um, once these all hit 100%, I'm going to get brothers in arms for all these guys and then reset my secondary for mentor and all repair again. My third, I'm going to get for commander probably the view range perk because I kind of think that this tank needs more view range since it is a sniper. Although with the E50, I might not get that. I might get something else. The gunner, I'm going to go with the, uh, the vert stab per, uh, skill. Sorry, I had to stop it and look because I can't remember the names of the skills. So I would go with Snapshot here, which adds 7.5% uh, um, Vert Stab. And that'll actually be really good with the Binox, but I don't think you're going to be using Binox on the E50M. It's very mobile. Um, for Driver, I'd probably get Off-Road Driving um, because I'm going to want to get that sp the mobility speed while I'm in the desert and stuff. I'm going to keep my mobility speed. You could get clutch braking, although I'm not sure it's going to be useful on the E50M since his mobility is so great. And the E50 seems to have pretty good mobility, but not good enough. On the Panther through E50, I would say clutch braking, but I think the E50M has enough mobility where I'd probably want to get off-road driving instead. The radio operator, I'm going to get situational awareness, which will add 3% to my view range. Uh, again, anything you can do to help that view range out in a snipe tank is better. Even on the E50 and E50M, I don't think they're brawling tanks. They they definitely want to hang back a little bit. So I'd get uh, uh, situational awareness for my third kill for the skill for the loader. Um, I'd probably go with the ammo rack skill, especially since these you have to save your repair kit usually for the engine. So that is um, safe stowage adds 12.5% to your ammo rack. Now the loader is the only guy out of those ones that I just said that their skill on the third one is a perk and it only comes becomes active at 100%. So you'll probably actually never get the benefit, but whatever. These other skills will all function underneath 100%, and that's why I chose them, and also because they're awesome. So that's the crew, and that's everything else. Let's get this tank at some games. So this is a game that I had on Serene Coast, which came out in 7.5. And in this one, I know you guys wanted to see, if I can anyway, a little more footage of tanks that are not fully upgraded. So this is the this is the stock uh, Panther, a, a game I had with the stock Panther with the L100 and the uh, stock turret. Stock everything, I think. I might have the tracks, I'm not positive. Um, but again, stock engine, everything. And one thing I did is I forgot to go over weak points for this tank. So let's just do that now while we're not doing anything. The weak points are pretty easy for this tank. Um, the lower plate, as always. The machine gun turret you can see right there on the upper plate. The uh, cupola that sticks up pretty big on this tank. The front of the turret is e pretty easy to pin if you're in a tier 8. See how flat it is? And then um, obviously anything on the side. The ammo rack is in the side above the tracks. So if you can hit it there, you get the ammo rack right above the tracks. Um, again, the transmission's in the front, all across the front, so just shoot it in the front, you're going to be hitting the transmission. So, now who am I shooting at here? T-3485 T pushing up kind of early. This is a great spot to go to if you need to snipe. T-32, if I'm not mistaken, yes, pinned him. Now, see, my damage is pretty low, but I'm still helping out a lot. Bam, he get, he's getting hit. It's not a lot of damage, but it makes those guys feel like, oh my god, I'm, I'm in a compromised position. I'm not going to be as aggressive, and that's kind of what this tank does help with. This is definitely a support tank. Until you get the upgraded, um, hit him again. Wow, these guys are really going down up there. Until you get the upgraded engine and uh, gun, you're pretty much a support tank uh, with this L100 and stuff. But once you get the bigger gun, you can be move around a little more. I'm trying to. That tiger is being stupid. Bam! He's dead. Um, I didn't kill him, but that's okay. So, once you get that, though, you can move around quite a bit. Another a panther getting juiced. He's way too up close. He needs to be back or up way more on the hill so he can't get shot at. He probably doesn't have an ox, which he needs to have. The panther should have an ox. It allows you to not have to get so close. He's got a nose thing going on, I think. So yeah, these the, my drives are dying every five seconds. Sorry about that. It's just kind of the way it is. Um, I'm trying to record a bunch of videos because I've got like 14 videos to do this week or something crazy like that. Um, I'm gonna be. I'm trying to up. Again, I'll be. Do, I try to do all my recording on the weekends or at least most of it, so I don't have to record during the week and I can do family stuff. Cause I I have, you know, I have an eight-hour day job 
and I have two kids and a wife. I mean, I've got a full plate of stuff. So to pump out as much videos as I'm trying to pump out, a lot of people don't just do YouTube full time to do this kind of thing. So let's get that map a little bigger. So what's happened here is we pretty much crushed their hill. So now we're moving up to get into better positioning positions. Bam! Shot on the KV-5 there. That's nice. See, this gun has pretty good pen. KV-2 is kind of an obvious duh. Kind of a derp right there. Getting wasted. Uh, pen, no damage. Probably hit him in the tracks or something. IS. Now, generally, see how I'm just kind of hanging out on this hill? You kind of don't want to do that, especially with your side armor showing. Um, but I'm taking shots while I can. I, it's, oh, now I'm spotted. As soon as I'm spotted, I'm taking a better position, more defensible position. Now I'm getting nailed pretty hardcore. Gun is out. I do repair it because I'm trying to snipe an L100. I'm not upgraded, so I do need to snipe. In this, in this, uh, with a stock Panther, it doesn't matter as much if your engine gets knocked out because you're just trying to snipe. Your mobility is not as important. Once you get fully upgraded, your mobility is a lot more important. Um, if you want to be a greater asset to your team. So, I need accuracy here, because I'm shooting at guys at like 350 to 500 meters. Which, if the, again, if this was a historically accurate tank, my accuracy on this gun would probably be like 2 point, or 0.25 or something. It would be that good. Um, again, please don't, please don't hate on me for that. That's my opinion of the German tanks. I know other people have different opinions. Some people swear that all the tanks are exactly equal and they're all just as good as the others. You know, if that was the case, the game would be boring because every tank would be like every other tank. So, I don't know. I don't think they're balanced. Which, I don't think they can be. I think it's impossible to say all tanks are balanced. Um, again, I still have fun in this tank. I like this tank. In fact, I'm really looking forward to underping myself and buying the upgraded... That guy's just sitting right out in the open. I'm going to pin him all day long, especially with the IS armor. It's pretty crappy. See, I'm pushing these guys back. I'm holding them back from pushing. Basically, in this whole game, we win... Well, I guess I'm. you know we're going to win because I'm not going to show you a game where we lose. But it's because we keep their heavies from pushing. Also, when you play this tank... Especially when you have stock, L100 and stuff, your heavies have to push up. You cannot be pushing up in this tank. You will die if you're a frontline guy. Your heavies need to take, need to get up there and put their armor out there. And let you do your job as support. Uh, you cannot be doing the kind, you know, a good job up front getting, you know, taking all the hits and stuff and basically dying. That's not going to help your team. So, I'm really worried about my drives dying during this game. Um, let's speed it up a tiny bit just because nothing really happens right here. Me trying to get shots on this guy. A couple shots on the IS. Let's get back to that. And he's dead. I mean, kind of out in the open. That's kind of why he died. Again, let's speed it up. Now I think I'm going to relocate here. Because we've pretty much got the hill and I need to relocate. I've got no shots on anybody. It's time to move up and get into a better support position. So I move up. No shots on those guys. We lost everybody but the type up here and me. And they actually have four tanks over this hill. A couple heavies. A couple mediums. They should be pushing right now. That's why I tell those guys just now. Hey, type, don't push. Don't get aggressive. Just wait. Wait for the guys on 4-5 to push up. And flank them. We are, we are leading... Don't do anything stupid. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna spot so that they think Artie's coming down on their face, and they aren't gonna move. Look at that T29 and a Tiger II. They should be roasting us right now, especially with me at 50 and that guy. He's they're almost he's almost dead. The Tiger II should be. Ro you know what? Let's check. Maybe he has the unupgraded turret. I think this guy doesn't have the upgraded turret. When you're in a Tiger II, get the turret before you get the 10.5. I know I say gun is everything, but in that tank, the, the first turret is so bad that you need to get the upgraded turret. 
For one, the armor on it's horrible, and you cannot push with a Tiger II if you have that turret. It's just too horrible. Secondly, it's obvious that you have the Henschel turret, and you're going to get shot all day long with that turret on there. It's not like a lot of other turrets. I did hit a guy there. He drove right in front of me. Accidents happen. I always say sorry when you shoot somebody. It's just kind of common courtesy. But everybody knows that you have the unupgraded turret when you're in the Tiger II. See that? I can tell from here he's got the unupgraded turret. But he's got the long 10. A lot of guys do that. Don't do it. See? Long 10. Get the turret first. Alright? So these guys not pushing. Tiger, The Tiger II's not being aggressive because he has that crap turret. He probably dies a lot. Giving me the back of his turret. Side turret. Not good. And I'm sitting up here exposing myself because I want to take him out. There. Now we're almost assured the victory. T29 does get a shot off of me, but he should push up now. Press his advantage. He's got way more hit points than me. He should press it, Press his advantage. Um, that type could be dangerous. He's doing an RTB right now. He's got four kills. He's definitely the best player on their team. I'm going to go at least scout him. What's he doing? I want to know where he is. There he is. He's RTBing. Bam! So, scouting is best. Nail him if you can. He stops. Dumb move. I don't know what he's doing. He's giving me ass armor. He's done. And he's dead. The T-29 could have killed me and saved that guy's life. But he just sat there. If you're a heavy, you have to push. Even if you're in a low, if you're top tier, you have to push. You cannot snipe the entire game. Okay, you're not a Panther, okay, or a TD. Arlo's pushing. There he is right there. Okay, you have to push. If that guy could have killed me, I mean, he probably still would have lost, but at least at least uh, I would be dead and the, t and the type would not be dead, and maybe he would have got like, at least a couple more kills. So I'm not going out there. He's going to one-shot me. I'm just keeping him spotted so that enemy or uh, my team can kill him. Get the, get the victory. We're already capping, so there's no way, there's no point in me risking death. He's aimed right at me. And boom, he's dead. Okay? So that's kind of what you want to do. So, really great game, 1100 point game, 25,000 credits, not that great probably because uh, my gun does not have much damage to it. I got Confederate because I hit uh, six guys. If you look at my kill list, actually damaged eight guys killed one so again that's definitely what a support tank looks like um so great game only one kill but again i damaged eight guys lots of racked up a lot of damage in this game so let me know what you think or actually no 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 we got one more game coming up hold on a sec this next game is on fisherman's bay standard battle spawning is tier eight top tier here now I do have the upgraded turret and the upgraded gun I do not have the biggest engine that's the only thing I don't have herp derp on my part this is still a support tank but I just can't get around the map as good we've got lots of people going to the city I usually go city just because not enough people go there you can win this map on city just by throwing a bunch of guys in the city now you still need to have guys on one two at least defending Maybe pushing if they got enough guys. You probably should have like three guys on one, two, or four. ELC, you always want to take care of the uh, scouts when you see them. That's why I'm stopped, trying to help make sure these scouts don't get in our base. Nice hit on the 1375. So now I've damaged both their scouts. They're scared. They're not pushing up. They know people are watching them. My job's done. Time to keep... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, no, I missed him. I took a wild shot because he was about to go behind that, behind that uh, hill. Let's see if I can get a hit on this guy. And tracking him. Yeah, right in your gut. What, what in the gut? So now I'm moving up. I'm trying to get to city here. It's okay to take some shots at the beginning of the game. Just don't sit around in one spot too much. There's no Artie here, so I don't have to worry about Artie. So the strategy there is a little different. You can sit in one spot if you're shooting at uh, scouts. Scouts again, scouting out the city. Our heavies are kind of hanging back a little bit. I'm pushing up into the heavy position right here. Really just want to scout and see who's coming. Okay, we've got a KV-5. 
and I did not pin his RTD2. But I'm not being very aggressive right here. I'm a, I'm a support tank, not a heavy tank. My armor is not good. We got two heavies behind us, behind me. Tiger 2 and a KB3, both heavy armored tanks. Not pushing up. I don't know what they're doing. But they are not in heavy positions. That's probably where I should be. So sitting here, looks like our uh, one line is doing being doing a very aggressive push, which is awesome. So we got a T-34 and a Pro. I don't know what happened with that shell. Kind of ghosted. Again, use your mobility to get out of there. Pro gets a hit on me and gets my uh, transmission. I do repair it. This tank needs to be mobile, and I am very much more in people's face here, so I need my mobility a lot more than if my gun went out like in the previous video. KB3, I don't he's taking a mild approach. I probably wouldn't do that. He's trying to flank a little bit. I should be the one flanking, not him. I'm being a little more aggressive than I should be right here. I know there's a 34 and a pro there. So here's an E2 trying to get flanks. Boom! Right through your turret, buddy. Making sure to keep... Basically what I'm doing is I'm now I'm just kind of making sure their line doesn't get through. I'm trying to push their heavies back. Mm, nah, not gonna happen. Oh, oh, oh! Here we go. What's up? What you doing, bro? Get out of my kitchen. Again, I'm gonna scout. I got a nice bounce here. And I decide to go after the T-34. Much more bigger threat than the pro. Engine, the tranny gets hit again. Tranny gets hit almost every time he gets shot in the front. Now let's look where those two shots went. The tranny goes all the way across the front, so probably doesn't really matter. Two shots right in the... One of them in the lower plate, one of them in the top plate, at an angle even, hitting my tranny. Yeah, it's a huge disability for these tanks. It's like playing basketball in a wheelchair, wheelchair kind of. You just don't have the same advantages. The normal... It, it's not an advantage. You're at a disadvantage. It's not that any other tanks have a bonus. They just don't have a disadvantage. Um, and German tanks do. So, and there's me doing a little, bit, a little bit of complaining. Just kind of pissed off that I got hit in the tranny two times within like two shots or three shots. It's pretty lame. KB3 putting side armor out. You don't learn. A, you can learn a lot driving German tanks. You have to be a lot more careful, and you have to be a lot better player to succeed in German tank. KV-5 looking for the R2-D2 here. Way wild shot. 175 pin gun of his, though. Can't get my uh, si my armor in the tangled. Bam! Right in the R2-D2. So, okay, now I'm at a third health. The, the KV-3 needs to get out there and take some hits. Super Pershing, a little under half. So what it looks like happened is the 1-2 one, line, one, line was not defended very well. We pushed right through, we're capping. And their whole team went the city. Again in the R2-D2. So we're just really holding them back, doing a great job of holding them back. To make sure they don't push through. And this is all you have to do when they throw their whole team on one side. Is make sure your team on this side can hold them back while the other guys get the win for you in the cap. And we're beating him by four tanks. I don't know how that happens. So, someone's saying, why aren't our heavies pushing up? Why does this KV-3 still have 100% health? Nobody knows. You know, I'm a medium. I can't get out there and push, so... I tell the KV, get out there. He's just going to sit there and wait for the cap. 800 point game. Not that great, but again, our heavies did not push. If our heavies would have pushed, probably would have killed a lot more guys, damaged a lot more guys. Interestingly enough, I have more credits this time around. Um, probably because I have more damage on my gun. So, uh, no medals. Not a great game. I don't know why I didn't get Confederate. Probably because somebody else also got six hits on enemy tanks. So that gave them the same as me, and uh, nobody got Confederate. Detected the KV-5. Still a really, really great game. 10 out of 14 shots. Hits received 7. Really good for the Panther 2 taking 7 hits and not dying. That was because I angled my armor properly and stuff. Uh, so another great game. Tell me what you think about this tank. I really like this tank. Um, don't get me wrong, I love it. I just wish 
it was not hamstrung like it is because it could be a real beast on the field like the T-44 is. The T-44 is a beast. The T-44 does not get ammo racked as much as people think it does. This tank, as, you'll, as you've seen, gets its engine taken out all the time. Um, all the time. So it's a big crutch or a big detriment. Um, play, it's like playing on crutches, I guess is my, my point there. Tell me what you think about this tank. Let me, uh, like, favorite, comment, whatever you need to do. I'll see you guys next time. Later. Later.